Good night, team. How you doing? Right here for Moto NZ. Today, I'm wearing the brand new Revit Off Track 2 H2O gear. I got the Revit jacket and pants. I got the former boots. I got the Exxon Ragnar gloves. Everything says it's waterproof. And it's eight degrees. It's very cold and it's raining. On my way in Wellington for work from Upper Hut. I thought, <clears throat> what better day and what better way to test out the waterproofing. So let's commute. Uh, probably time for an update on my helmet too. The um, Arrow Commander helmet, when I first got it, was so comfortable and so awesome. Um, a couple of little niggles about this helmet that have appeared over time. Firstly, the visor with pin lock. The pin lock at the very top up here rubs on the seal. And so um, it's got a few hairline scratch marks in it. It's not something you see every day, but just at the very top of the visor, I, I can see it. So for some reason, probably because I changed the um, cardo on the side of the helmet too often, uh, it became, I, I struggled to get the speakers in the helmet and be comfortable. So I ended up having to cut a slither of about, probably no more than five millimeters of one of the speaker compartments, the left hand side. Uh, it's probably more to do with the shape of my head and everything else as well, but yep. That's all good, it's fixed, it's been comfortable, and I've been wearing it during winter because it has less airflow than my Arai XD4, and so it's warmer. I've been wearing this jacket for a few weeks, actually, because it has been quite cold lately. And I can report back that the thermal insulation on this jacket is excellent. Excellent day. Revit Off Track 2 H2O jacket and pants combo jacket has a lot of pockets it's got two front pockets it's got a removable thermal and waterproof layer that's two layers by the way thermal and waterproof um and i actually they, they say you can remove the thermal and waterproof layer and wear it as an as a jacket on its own generally i think the manufacturers say that to sell jackets but who actually would um this one actually stylish and could be worn on its own it's not bad uh black and reflective white panels radio here we go out onto the motorway up to 100 kilometers an hour or thereabouts now, any other other gear i would have a crutch by the time we get into wellington just thinking to see what the story is here uh, the pants, you got your standard jeans front, like lap pockets, and really big cargo pockets kind of on the front of the thigh. Super comfortable. Again, waterproof and thermal insulation layer can be removed. I probably won't when it gets uh, warm enough to not need those layers. I will probably just run my uh, Dirt Series pants again. But uh, so far, we're down to six degrees. My torso and legs, I don't even feel the cold, to be honest. I'm so well wrapped up. The gloves, the thermal insulation on them, they're waterproof. They've got a massive aperture for the wrist, and that's big enough to go over the cuffs of my jacket, uh, which is good. It helps with the waterproofing. So my fingers are dry, although I can feel a little bit of the cold stuff coming in through the fingers so I'd probably say insulation is an 8 or 9 out of 10 6 degrees now it's probably the coldest I've ridden in between 4 and 6 degrees doesn't get much colder than that here you get the occasional frost did wake up this morning and see that um, the South Island the lower south is covered in snow so particularly cold at the moment in New Zealand. Traffic's particularly bad as well today. Rain's only going to get heavier as we get into Wellington. 
But I'm confident because this stuff says it's waterproof and it's a decent brand. So I'm looking forward to getting into Wellington and seeing if I'm still dry. The aim of the game is to get to work and not have to change my, generally, you know, if I'm wearing any of my old gear, uh, the crutch is where it will leak first. Yeah, you can wear waterproof over gear, but it's baggy and cumbersome and annoying to have to put on. And I'd rather just get a set of waterproof gear and, and be done with it, you know? That said, the uh, time that I spend in gear uh, it definitely shortens the life of the gear. It wears out before it um, gets too old. A feature of these Exxon Ragnar gloves, they've got a little squeegee across the index finger on the left hand. That's nice. Just got to keep an eye on these cars. Slow moving traffic, they have a habit of changing lanes without looking or indicating. And in these cold, wet conditions, my uh, contact patch with the road is, what's the word? Compromised. So up till now, I've been, I've been rocking these gloves for most of winter. And I felt that I haven't really needed to uh, to go with heated grips because they're so warm. That's a personal preference. I mean, other people will wear the gloves and maybe decide that their hands are colder than mine. It's only been in the last week or two when we've been getting this really cold stuff, you know, below seven or eight degrees, that uh, I really need, I've really been thinking, oh yeah, heated grips would be nice. My fingers have been warm enough on every ride up until we got this real cold stuff. Now they're just starting to get a little bit of a chill in the tips of the fingers. However, the gloves are waterproof, which is outstanding. I find that the pin lock on this helmet does a great job too. Except for days when I'm talking to you and it's very cold and wet outside. I do get a little bit of inside of the visor for when I'm speaking to you. But otherwise, generally, no worries. And if you get a bit of anti-fog film on your glasses, you can wear them inside the helmet too. It does fog, they do fog up occasionally when I'm standing around. But I find that they, they defog pretty quickly when you start moving. Yeah, you know, here's the test. The spray off the car in front. Quite thankful I've got a screen on this bike. I just take a, a fair chunk of the cold wind off my chest. If I was on a naked bike, I'd definitely be able to feel that by now. Six degrees. It's Celsius for anyone wondering. Utterly wet. Raindrops are getting bigger. Oh, you clearly went through a red light. That's a smart thing to do, buddy. Ooh, so moist. Hey, I'm just going to put it out there. I'll be if I make it to work and don't have a, a damp crutch. It's uh, reasonably heavy wind and it's, I'm sorry, reasonably driving. If you, dear listener, have any tips or tricks as to how to maintain a dry crutch on a ride with a decent heavy rain, I would love to hear from you. Chuck them in the comments below. Cold creeping in a little bit more specifically through my right hand second finger from the smallest ring finger i guess you call that still dry at the stage flowing down again back into lane splitting mode this next, next section of the motorway is notorious for taking out motorcyclists if you uh if you do ride around here in traffic and your lane split please be careful I'll show you. So we come around this corner. This is a 80k section, 80k's per hour. And we come into this bit, which is the Petoni on-ramp. This is where 
more traffic joins the motorway. It's the last on-ramp before Nodonga and Wellington. And this bit up here, this is where the left lane moves right. The right lane stays where it is. We've got a lane coming in from the left and people not watching. And then a motorcyclist coming through a bit quicker than everyone else and they'll just get taken out. I've seen it happen many, many times. Not today though. Limited fast lane splitting going on today because the gaps are not there. Uh, being up 25 minutes so far still dry everywhere at this stage still warm everywhere apart from my fingertips tell you what this traffic this is the reason why I don't ride it. I, I do ride a motorbike. I don't take a car. If this traffic didn't exist, then I would be in the car today. I'd be like, no, I'm not riding in that. That's terrible weather. But the thought of just taking an extra hour and half a tank of gas to get to work is crazy. And the petrol that I run the car on at 95 is over $3 a litre at the moment. So $150 to fill a tank in the car or 40 to fill the tank in the T7. I don't know which way I'm going. Two minutes in, still dry. Got a shell of this eight, uh, rivet off track two gear does a great job at making most of the water bead off, soaks through, meaning that your jacket and pants don't get heavy because, well, not as heavy because the water hasn't soaked into them. It's not always just being stopped by the waterproof layer on the inside. It's a minimal water that, that waterproof layer is actually needing to stop. Okay, so after sitting in the rain for 27 minutes, this is where things start getting moist. Things have had time to soak in. This person's not staying in their lane very well, not paying attention. She's bloody wintry now. Wind, rain, cold, We're up to seven degrees. Oh, tropical. All right, coming up to the 30 minute mark. Decidedly moist outside. Right hand, smallest two fingers are decidedly cold. Left hand, surprisingly okay. Watch. Still dry at this stage. Feeling cold though, can feel the cold coming up the crotch. Um, chest, can feel the cold coming through. Not cold, just feel the cold. Still dry, that's the main thing. We can always put more layers on underneath the jacket and pants. The only thing we want to test here is the, the claims of waterproofness. Hey, MT09 buddy, didn't make it too far, did you? Oh, right, let's get through the tunnel, which is always a painful experience. And then I am at work. I'll check how dry we are and uh, give it a score based on that.
All right, well, we've been going for 33 minutes and I'm stuck in a tunnel. Um, I can give you a score now because I am completely dry on the inside. So Revit, off track, two, H2O gear. You have lived up to your claims of waterproofness. Well done. Um, Exxon Ragnar gloves, warm. Well, no, no, dry, not 100% warm. But put some heated grips in, be fine. Of course, the Cardo Pack Talk Neo on my helmet right here. That's lasted the journey, no worries. Um, no major drips through the visor of my Arrow Commander helmet. And my feet are dry too, thanks to the trusty former boots that are going on five years old. There you have it. We are waterproof and we are at work. And hopefully I can dry this gear before I have to ride home. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. Check out Kiwi Rider magazine at kiwirider.co.nz. Two magazines absolutely free for you to check out every month. And uh, Kiwi Rider Podcast available on all platforms as well. Just search out Kiwi Rider Podcast. Otherwise, hey, Rick, catch you next time.